Good. Hi, Lauren Dana. How are you guys doing? Good to see you guys. We're doing great. Good Back by you. the American flag. I must salute both of you. I'm actually saluting the flag and you three. It's a wow. triple salute. It's an honor. America, it's my honor to be with you. Lauren, how's life? Is he treating you well? I will come there, Dana. <laughs> I will take care of business. I figured. I figured. Go easy on um, us today, will you? I know you do push-ups. I don't sweat you, okay? Uh, everything's awesome. good. Dana's doing great so far. Good, <laughs> How's good. the family? How's everybody good. there? They're very good. You know, uh, all the girls, uh, well, everyone's married. We had four weddings within five years. Wow. So if you guys have any money, you can... Uh, I was going to say, no wonder why you're working so hard. That's right. That's right. So all the girls are, are um, most of them in our, are in Orange County now. Tommy, you know, is playing with the Mets. It's 11 o'clock. So awesome. He's, he's pitching in the Mets organization. It's been a crazy, crazy season, but, but he's still, uh, you know, he's with the Mets and the girls are all doing very well. Very well. And you're, anime, are you a grand, the oldest, are you? Anime, anime the oldest has two children. Wow. Uh, and Emily has one with, she's almost about to, in about a month, she's going to pop with her second one. Wow. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, that's so, so all good, you know, all good. Challenging times for everybody. Yeah, it's crazy. Is, is your son in St. Lucie or is he out? He was in uh, Binghamton, the Rumble Ponies, Double A. Oh yeah. This this year was going to be his move to really the Bigs because they were uh, anyway. Long story, but they have a forty man roster going with twenty extras at their additional location. He didn't make that roster, but the pitching coordinator called him okay. to say, "Listen, we you were on the bubble with this, and we really believe in you." But there are a lot of, as you know from, from the teams, there are contractual obligations to being called for the 40 or 60 man, yep. where for the next, whatever, for the next five years, you actually make a living playing yeah. baseball. Oh, You're yeah. not on that minor league contract where you just, you know, you, where you make nothing. Yeah. So, so they had enough guys already on that 40 man contract, paying them decent money that, you know, especially at this season, you just want to think before you start just bringing guys up and changing their contract. Yeah. Yeah. You could, I mean, you could really affect the guy's career, even, even negatively when you start burning up his time. Many, many, you know, that's the tragedy of it within professional sports is how many careers are really being compromised yeah. by the college player, uh, the junior who thought the seniors were going to be gone, but now the seniors feel like they have to do another NCAA year so the juniors coming up here and going, I thought this guy would be out of my way. Yep. And now he's still here. All of that stuff, um, you know, and the draft. I mean, major leagues going to whatever it was, it's, six rounds? Nine yeah, it's all something. condensed. Yeah, yeah it's all condensed. All condensed. You know, we're just doing a few rounds, and the rest of you guys are going to have to get a, you know, a, a free agent contract somewhere. They're going to pay you a couple grand. And you're going to, you know, make your way to Indiana, play some independent ball or whatever happens. Yeah. You're going to really have to scramble as opposed to a year ago. So everybody's scrambling. But, yep. you know, you got to keep a good head on your shoulders. He's a smart guy and a yeah. good guy. Well, so we it's always like, say you know, if, if you have the talent, you'll find a way there. Exactly. You know, so, so he's just like, I'm just going to keep working out. He's, you know, he's throwing 95 now. He's working yeah. on a cutter. So he's just figuring – I'll just keep working next spring training. You know, they're going to go, wow, he was working. Yeah. 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 That's great. Oh, listen, it's, ex it's exciting. I mean, listen, it's going to get more competitive, but that's what the big leagues is. The big leagues is competitive. It's a competitive arena where you have to Every show up best of the best. As you know, Dana, everything at the pro level is very competitive. Yep. Talent wins. Flooring is competitive. Carpentry, <laughs> everything. Painting. Uh, yeah, hey, so if you want to do it, you know, uh, you better come with your game face on because this guy right next to you, he's working as hard as you or harder. Yep. So you have talent. Congratulations. If you don't want to work on it, you know, you'll just be gone. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, man. And, and they are so talented in the big leagues. That, that's it's what amazing. I've learned through the years. It's, you know, it's just these pitchers, they're so accurate. And you could have another guy that's very accurate too, but the guy that has that long career, he doesn't miss, you know? It's and crazy. It's, and it's amazing. And I'm assuming it's the same, you know, in the acting space, especially 
you know, I was going to ask you this. How is the acting space now compared to, say, when you cut your teeth in the industry? Um, the industry has changed so much for young people coming into it um, in, in nearly every way because the, the work is different and the money you get for the work is different. So in a sense, there's a lot more work because of cable television, mm -hmm. because of all sorts of, of new shows. So you see also, I see billboards for shows I've never heard of. Not only have I not heard of the show, I've never heard of the network it's on. I don't know where you go see it, but that's work for people. Yep. However, just like everything, that's work for very little money mm. and and sort of questionable new contracts with this with the uh, with the Screen Actors Guild, with SAG after with the union that that represents you. So many things look when I was a young actor, they were raising the rate that you had to make in order to be covered by the health plan. Mm. All of these small things that if you're doing it for a living, you actually have to think about these things. Yep. You know. When exactly. you start, when you're, you're an actor, you're a great actor. Everyone thinks you're wonderful. Everything changes when you think, you know, I'm going to pay the bills with this. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I'm going to pay the bills. I'm going to, all my food, my rent, everything. I'm going to act and make money from it and just pay for my life. The wild Very different terrain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because now you have to think of, so, so with so many jobs at a much lower income, and a higher threshold to get the minimum to be covered by the health plan, you really do have to scramble. Wow. You really do have to do a lot more work in a lot more ways in order to get covered and to get enough, as I said, enough money to pay your rent. Yeah. It back when I, I was a young guy and we'd be at an audition, me and a bunch of young guys, you know, and the older guy would be talking to us at an audition saying, Years ago, you know, <laughs> you could get one episode of a cop show, like one episode of Starsky and Hutch, and you were covered in the health plan for a year. You know, wow. uh, that was really the golden days. Mm. And things, things were changing. As I say, even when I got into it, things were changing. Minimums were raising and everything. And now, you know, they've, they've raised to a, to a point where it's, it's very, very difficult to, for, for young people. But here, with me, I mean, that's why I suggest, if you want to be an artist, you have to think of the whole thing. Because just acting as a funny guy in sitcoms, mm. um, that has almost gone away to all but a hobbyist. You know, this guy who you're going to have to have another gig and have that be flexible in order to audition to be the funny guy in that sitcom. Wow. So what do people do? What are the because other jobs? Because there isn't enough work. Uh, I mean, is it the classic uh, like waiter many, or waitress many, thing? It's the classic waiter or waitress. There are a lot, there are an incredible amount of entrepreneurs in the arts. Okay. Who either it's within the arts in, in, in teaching or, or facilitating other artists in ways or there's just flexibility of, you know, a friend of mine many, many years ago, uh, he loved birds. Mm -hmm. He opened a bird store. So he had an employee and he's running this bird store, but he's coming back and forth to auditions and he's shooting a commercial on this day so he can't cover it. And now, you know, it's, it's worked out for him. And he's, he's done, he's done w well enough in acting to have a, you know, a reasonable living with his residuals and things like that. And he has a good operating bird store. But think about that, that I knew him, you know, uh, 37 years ago when he opened a bird store and he still has the bird store. Mm. So it's, it's it, like a it's home being base. It gives him a little uh, bit of flexible. a base, right? E exactly. Yeah. E yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I, I so everybody and everybody, I mean, no, I was going to say, I just think people don't realize what goes into, you know, uh, attacking and going after your dream. Uh, I, I think that's true. I think that's true. And, um, but as you know, as you guys know, look, there are plenty of people, like we talked about a baseball, 
there are plenty of young people out there that are willing to put in the work and do it. Mm. The fact is, you know, I'm not faulting people, but you know, most people are just kind of fooling around. Yeah. They don't really want it because they're not identifying it with the work that it entails. Mm. So true. Especially, especially in a world like mine, where television tells you that, oh my gosh, it's just, it sort of rains money and you really kind of don't do anything, you know? Pretty girl like Lauren, just come into it and you'll be a movie star and you'll just be rich and you'll be on, you'll get a reality show and all of this stuff um, without thinking, first of all, uh, to be, to be uh, lovely, uh, like Lauren, wonderful. You gotta be a great actress. You gotta be a great businesswoman. You gotta, you know, you've gotta use your brain and be, like I said, flexible within the kind of work you're doing, what you're doing with your career. All of those things uh, come into it. You know, I mean, um, many, many, many people drive home after a few months uh, because it's just, yeah, it's harder than I thought. You like have to work. I get rejected you know, all the time. Yeah, a lot of rejection. Uh, you, you get rejected all the time. You know, people joke about having actors have these delusions of grandeur, right? I say, hey, man, you better have delusions of utter supremacy. You better, you know, your ego, not in treating others badly, not in being not in body, but working on your craft enough that nothing that anybody says shakes you from your knowledge that you have what it takes. Mm -hmm. Because, because you, do, you, you do have what it takes if you work on your skill set. You're you confident know? in the work. And the fact is, right, sometimes I talk to young students and I said, like anybody, like an, an accountant has to begin in like the 10th grade thinking, I'm pretty good at math. Yeah. You know? He has a talent set that he's following to say, where, where do my talents lie? What am I good at? And everyone is gifted. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, all the, the idol shows, the voice shows, the, the you can hit the jackpot today shows is kind of telling you, well, it could just happen. You know, you could just be hit. They put a crown on your head and you're a star. Mm -hmm. You have to think before you become an actress, are you good at it? Yeah. You know, have you done shows in your school or your college or wherever where other people said, you're really good at this? No, I'm serious. Like, you're really good at this. I'm not bragging. I, look, I, I grew up in Philadelphia. In my family, to say I'm in, entering show business is like saying, mom and dad, I'm moving to Mars. You, you, know, <laughs> you might as well have said that. Yeah. You know? But, but, but in my shoes, when I was, when I was acting in, in, in high school, at the end of high school, a teacher that I, that I really respected, who was a tough teacher, my theater teacher was serious about it, not fooling around. And at the end of high school, he said, of all my students, I really think that you should think about becoming a professional actor. I think you have that much talent at it. And if you work at it and build on the skill set, you could actually do it. That's cool. and, and you're flattered. But I think, what are you crazy? I got to get a job. I have to, you know, have a life like people have a life. I can't, you know, that's not with. I went to college. Uh, I auditioned. I was a freshman, non theater major. Just as a lark, I auditioned for a class that was for seniors that were theater majors. Okay, it was the highest acting class there was. So I just, I'll audition for the class. Why not? Just, just for fun. I won't get in, but I'll audition just to do one audition. I auditioned. I got in the class as a freshman. And at the end of that semester, the professor of the class took me aside to say, you know, I've taught a long time. You're the only student that I would actually recommend become a professional actor. That's mm. fantastic. That like rang the bell of thinking, not thinking, oh, I'm going to be a star, but it rang the bell of thinking, do I have the skill set? that I can work on and actually compete in this? Mm -hmm. And if the answer was yes, then yeah, then the tough thing. Mom and dad, I'm not going back to college. I'm moving to New York City. I'm going to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I'm studying acting. I'm gonna go through with this. You know, God bless my mom and dad. Mom is a mom. 
what are you going to do? You're going to starve. What's an actor? What is, you know? My dad, if you think this is what you, my dad, if you think this is what you want to do, if you think you have the skill set to do this, then work hard at it and just become the best. Mm -hmm. That's all. Just work hard like anything else. If you're going to be a carpenter, you better start playing in boards, get some tools and start working. So, okay, you want to do that? Start working. So I did. Did you have mentors like throughout your, your college experience that kind of- I had, I had, I had great mentors. I had great yeah. mentors uh, that, um, that, that the theater teacher in my high school. I was sick when I was young. Uh, I had asthma. I was beaten up by bullies uh, every day at school. Wow. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was in the hospital a lot. So out of the four years of high school, I was absent for about half the time, about two years. Wow. So things were very tough on me. And, um, and the theater teacher, both, you know, I just sort of had an artistic bent. You know, it was what, where my interest lied. It was what I kind of wanted to do art and, and, and reading and, you know, um, and, and acting music. I was a musician. So our high school had a big wing that was like sort of the arts wing with the theater room and the music room and the art room. Well, honestly, I sort of cut everything and just stayed over in the arts thing. And because it was so sort of punishing to me and the other part, I kind of didn't just, I mean, just enough to get by over there, but I just stayed there. And there was this alcove with a cement wall and a sofa back there and books and books and books, all the plays, just, just shelves of plays in the theater room. Mm -hmm. And I would be there on the sofa, like hiding, just reading plays and stuff. And people would come in, is Tom Wilson in here? Everyone's looking for him. And the theater teacher would say, no, I don't know, I don't know where he is. <laughs> so he would just cover for me because he knew I was just going through a lot, you know? Yeah. I was just going through a lot and my brain was kind of frying. So he just cut me a break. So he was a great mentor figure and he's the one who said, I think you should become an actor. Wow. So, so he, he meant a, a great deal to me, a great deal to me. And then, and then through life, we, we do have, we do have a mentors until like Dana, you know, you get to an age where you start having to reach out and mentor people yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, you know, I, I love to go back, you know, to those times when people are just starting out because I agree with you. I think a lot of folks today, you know, whether it's in sports or business or, you know, again, entertainment, they don't understand that early grind and how painful it is. H how did you deal with it? Maybe not really understanding your craft at a deep level yet, but you still had to compete. What was it that was like, what drove you? Was it in you? Just something you were a competitor at heart? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I just, I didn't have a lot. My parents didn't have money. Mm. My dad was sick a lot. You know, the power was turned off in our house a lot. So I was doing my homework by candlelight with my wow. brother. Our refrigerator was a cooler full of ice with bologna in it. The ice you know, <laughs> the ice, that was the ice box, you know. So, if you, want to, if you want to get out of that, you better work and you better have guts, you know? And I, give my, I don't give myself credit, honestly, for a lot of talent and everyone saw it. I, but I got to say, and look at me as an older teenager when you're trying to get out there in life, I did have a good worth, work ethic and I had the guts to do it. Because to get up there in front of people, no matter what you're doing, no matter what you're doing, Dane and Lauren, or what I was doing on a stage or whatever, it takes guts to get out there and take the bad comments and take the hate and take all that stuff and go, okay, I keep going. That's all I do is I work and I keep going. You know, as I said before, I think you need the confidence to say, look, I have a talent at this and I'm going to try to grow it, you know? But as you know, when you, you know, on the, on the hardwood floor, if you're the nail that's sticking out, everybody around you is going to want to hammer. Yep. Yeah. I like so yeah. you just have to, you just have to put up with it and go, okay, everybody can say whatever they want. And I'm just going to keep yeah. or whatever. 
I, I honestly, my thought was, I am going to do my best. I'm going to work hard and I'm going to go for this. And you know what? I might fail. I'm not going to do something where like, I'll win. I'm sure of it. I don't know. I might fail. But at the end of it, if I go to a regular job, I'll know that I had the guts to go for it and work, you know, work my butt off. And maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't. For me, look, I'm as surprised as anybody. I'm shocked that I got, I started working in commercials and things. You know, when I was a young guy, I was a blonde kid, you know, young, handsome guy. I'm chewing gum in a commercial. Wow, the flavor really hangs in there. You know, whatever, you know, <laughs> doing that stuff. You know, I, uh, I was, in, I was in the national commercial that introduced biscuits at Kentucky Fried Chicken. You know? Wow, thank God. I was a construction worker, and I'm having my lunch, and something's missing. Boink! A biscuit? Wow, that's delicious! You know, <laughs> that kind of stuff. But from that into, you know, developing, working, 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 and I've been consistently working now for whatever it is, uh, 30, 38 years? In show, I mean, I've been I've been doing stand up. I was doing stand up in New York City. Could guts again, guts. Just get up on stage and start doing a show. If you won't hire me for your show, I'll just write my own and get on stage and I'll just I'll just make it and do it myself. Cool. Um, but you know, I've been doing stand up for forty years. So does that does that answer make sense? Yeah, yeah. no, it does. We I know we love hearing these kind of stories because you know today it's all about the it's like the Instagram culture and. I just think people are, they're competing against, they're competing for the wrong thing, right? And for you, your, your mindset was, I just want to, I want to be great. I'm all in on this. If I fail, I fail, but I know I gave it everything I had. And, and right. that's, that's an amazing feeling that you have with inside, inside you um, when you do get to the top. Yeah. I, I heard a writer talk and they said a great phrase, which was just, don't wish more than you work. Mm, I love always that. be always be working more than you're wishing we all have wishes i have wishes now but if you don't want to put in the work it just it's not going to happen mm -hmm. so the, the the individual who really puts in the work is when maybe not exactly how you picture it you know i honestly when i was a young actor i didn't imagine that like in my 60s people would be leaning out their car window yelling butthead at me. I didn't, I didn't imagine that, you know? Uh, it's an unusual thing, but you're, you're, taking, you're taking another path and that freelance path where you're just following opportunities, it doesn't go exactly where you want it to go. You're just following opportunities. Yeah. And everybody, everybody living a life like that would probably tell you, yeah, I'm surprised as anybody. I didn't, think it would work out like this or whatever, an actor, uh, one of those actors, 40 years in a soap opera. I don't know. I just kept showing up to work. And uh, here I am years later and I'm showing up to work. Or, or me, where a friend of mine actually is a guy in a soap opera for years. And we're talking and he says, Tom, I was thinking like, you've, you've never had like a regular job in anything. You've never been like the regular guy in a TV show. You've just gone like job to job to job to job. I just say, yeah, ever since the day I got here, I've just gone job to this one and that one and the other one and one from left field and one from over here. And um, it's crazy. It's cr crazy, difficult. But I, yeah, I'm as surprised as anybody. I, I actually did that. So I, I have to ask you this. How do you deal with like the emotional tax and stress that goes with, with that? Because I'm sure there were times early in your career where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm an actor. I'm getting paid to act, but the well feels like it's drying up a little bit. How do you have that sort of trust that the next one's going to be there for you? That is absolutely true. And I'm not, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I'm not doing a big commercial or trying to convince anybody of any, anything. But the foundation of everything I've done is my faith in God and my faith that God is leading my life forward in the way that he wants it to go. You know? So I've tried to work my best. I've tried to use every gift that I believe that God has given me to the best that I can. 
I've probably blown it plenty of times. And believe me, believe me, a freelance life of an artist like this leaves you in many, many long nights with three or four children with no money for the next mortgage payment, you know, looking up and saying, I don't know how this is going to work. Mm. And maybe I should quit this. But I'll tell you honestly, as God is my witness, somehow we made it through. You know, we've had great triumphs. We've had great tragedies. We've, had, we've eaten at the best steakhouse. And we've eaten spaghetti a lot of nights in a row. Mm. Both things, you know. But without the foundation um, of my faith, honestly, I don't know how people live. I, I, you know, honestly, I kind of, I'm amazed. I'm like, wow, uh, I guess congratulations that you could do it all in your head and think I have to carry on. I have to carry on because without, um, without believing that my life has a purpose and the purpose might even be a mystery to me. I don't know, but my purpose is to love love the people that I come in contact with, love my family, care for my children, take care of my wife, and spread uh, love and support to people wherever I go. You know, um, as Mother Teresa said, people say, what's, what's the meaning of my life? What's the purpose of my life? She says, uh, well, you draw a six-foot circle around yourself and then uh, just love all the people in the circle. That's all. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I could imagine it. Without that, it would be a bit of a roller coaster ride. It is a roller coaster ride. Too, it's know. very dangerous. To, yeah. Yes, it's it's very dangerous. It's very very dangerous. And now I'm not gonna. You know, look. As you guys know, I got white hair. Okay, I'm old. I've seen a lot of things. I started out in nightclubs, and many of my friends, many of my friends, have committed suicide. It's a very dangerous thing to just have these ideas, these notions of being a big shot or being important, or I thought my life would go in this direction and it's gone in that direction. All sorts of things have happened to people where just with their mind alone, I'll tell you, because I've seen it, they were unable to survive the roller coaster. Mm. They couldn't do it. And that is, that is serious. That is serious business. So, you know, my suggestion to everybody is when you, when you get into something that's really going to mess with your ego, it's really going to mess with your ideas about yourself and your value. And if you're, you know, whatever, the beautiful young lady, it's very, very difficult, very difficult to be identified like that, treated like trying to act and everything. It's very, very hard doing it without a foundation of, of faith and purpose and belief in your own life as an artist. Without that, I honestly don't know how you do it. Yeah. yeah. That's a great story. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. It's the truth. Sure. Yeah. But, but it's true. It's yeah. true. So many, so, so many people and, you know, and you don't want to bring a conversation to that, but often I'm in the back parking lot of something and some young person's talking to me and they're just, it's like, it's sort of that wish thing. And this, and this will happen and this will happen. And I, I just have to do you know how many people that I know have done the wish thing and killed themselves mm. because, because they have, that's a fact. Yeah. That is a fact. They're not here now because they got lost in it. And it swept them away, and it can. So put your feet on the ground, know where your talents lie, believe in that talent, and be ready for a difficult time. But in the end, if, if you know, in the end, look, if you can stay balanced, if you can love your family, if you can move forward in the places that God sends you, yeah, you could definitely do it. Yeah. You know, Speaking, this is something I wanted to ask you. I was thinking about you and, and identity. You know, did you worry that you know playing a uh, an iconic character early in your career may affect your opportunities later? You know, it did you affect my it. opportunities. Okay, it did affect my opportunities greatly. You know, 
my, my faith, my, my unwillingness to do things that I didn't, you know, that I didn't like, that I didn't agree with, the kind of, the kind of material that I didn't want to be a part of, the identification with the whole back to the future thing, with people wanting me to, to knock them on the head more than they wanted me to audition for the part, you know, all those sorts of things. It limited me greatly. It limited me greatly. <clears throat> That's a part of the game. Yeah. If you can't take it, don't get on. It's very difficult. What, what it did do for me, it, look, this took years for me to figure out, thinking about it. And there were years when I was 32 where, I, dude, I wasn't happy about it at all. Mm. At all. But what it did do was I, to, every, to everyone watching right now, they've seen me a billion times on their screen as an internet meme, you know, as a movie, as a thing compared to Trump, as whatever thing. My face has maybe been internet shared more than anybody's, billions of times. What it forced me to do was come into myself and be satisfied with the person that I am, you know, with my self-identity to me, mm. which is, I think, the most vital thing. I love you guys, Dana and Lauren. Honestly, to a great degree, I don't care what you think about me or my career or the stuff that I've done. I love you. But, you know, people are going to think their thing. People are going to scream butthead at me. and People are going to want me to knock them on the heads because I've become, as I've joked about, but I'm like, I'm an object of pop art. Yeah. You know, I'm like a human Andy Warhol Campbell soup can. Yeah. You know, where people look at me, I understand that. I understand it cuz it's cuz it's life and it's I my face has been on TV 7 trillion times that people go, oh, "Oh, the guy, the guy from the thing. Hello." And you know, I understand that. Yeah. But people don't think about it as happening every single day for 35 years. Wow. You know. I think I could that do that. that is going to you know, it's going to work on you a little bit where you have to figure out ways to, uh, to live with it, to fit, you know, to, to live, to move forward with it and be okay with yourself. Like I'm okay as an artist. I'm okay with the, with the wide variety of things I've acted in, with painting, with the writing I've done. So, you know, I'm cool with it. If some guy, you know, who sees me on somebody's Insta feed wants to call me a butthead, like oh, whatever, I don't care. Speaking of art though, your art is amazing. Yeah. Thanks. It's beautiful. Well, beautiful pieces. We were just looking at some of it before uh, we came on. Yeah. Well, early on, when you're acting in TV shows and cop shows and all that sort of stuff, early on, I, I always liked art and I always liked painting and all that. But I just figured I need, I'm going to need an additional personal artistic uh, way to live, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm not getting it just being the disgruntled dad on a sitcom that has two jokes to, you know, whatever. That's like, whatever, yeah, okay. That's what I do to pay the bills. But what am I doing as an artist to, to actually share something? You know, making a painting is great to me because I'm the director, the producer. It is what it is. It's just whatever I make it. At the end, I just go, yeah, that's it. I did it. Okay. You can like it or, hey, I, you know, that's great. It's great. People have liked it. Fantastic. But the fact is, I made it and I like it. So, you know, that's great. I was going to ask you where you get your ideas from for the art. I think. Uh, or you feel it. Maybe you just feel it. I'm, I'm a weird guy, Dana. You know, I'm a weird guy. And I just get a lot of ideas. Uh, you know, in the second grade, when everybody was playing kickball, honestly, I was the kid like walking around under trees, just looking up at the leaves and thinking about stuff. Uh, so, you know, it was always, and, and, you know, so it was always like, oh, that, you know, the weird kid who, whatever, because I had asthma, because I wasn't a great athlete, because of so many things, I just didn't do this stuff. I did my stuff. And, 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 and thank God, because by the end of high school, when everyone's trying to figure out life, you know, and I was, I said, I was sick so much. I was having such difficulty academically just because I didn't want to be over there. Not because I was dumb, just because I couldn't take that stuff. Mm. I was really, I, I mean, I was really like, I'm in big, big,
big trouble in my life. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do because I just, I kind of think of, you know, I, my head is in the clouds and I walk around and I just have ideas about things. And, and all these guys are going to work at, a, at an insurance company. Like that's like a real job where you get paid and you have your office. Uh, I'm not doing that. I mean, I can't do that. I'm nuts. So, and that's when I said, you know, like I'm 19 and a couple of friends of mine were doing stand up, you know? And then it's like, you mean, you just write stuff. You just write crazy stuff or funny stuff or whatever. You do your own piece and you just go to this club and they give you five minutes just to do it. You know, like, yeah. And we, sometimes you make 20 bucks. Sometimes they give you a cheeseburger out of the kitchen. I'm like, I'm doing that. Yeah. yeah. I'm doing that. So I just jumped on stage and started writing and performing. And, uh, you know, it wasn't a stairway. To, you know, I didn't get rich or anything. But <laughs> in the, you know, in the first week, somebody says, uh, listen, we're driving to New Jersey for this gig at a, like a campground. You know, I said, I'm not even a comedian. I don't even have a show yet. I just started. They go, look, look, well, it's 10 bucks and probably dinner, but we need three guys. We can't find another guy. So would you just come, just come with us and just do whatever? Uh, okay. So within a few days, I got my first paying gig, like $10 oh, and a cheeseburger in the middle of New Jersey, 19. 19. So in the middle of New Jersey somewhere at some campground thing, I did, I don't even know what I did, but I did a show for five minutes. Then I introduced the other two guys and I made 10 bucks and dinner and boom, oh, we're in showbiz. That's really cool. Do you feel like all the art that you participate in, it helps you? like uh quiet that active mind a bit Ab absolutely yeah absolutely i will get nutty and nervous and stuff and walk around and my wife will say something like you should go to the back you should go to the studio and you know you should paint something just do something get out of here just, just get out of just here paint. just paint just <laughs> paint paint because like painting just it's it takes your brain to a different like painting an, an orange takes your brain into a different space than where you were. I mean, I, th I think everybody should do it just as, a, just as a brain thing, because it's amazing that you've got a lot of problems, but you, you, you shift your brain and you start saying, well, the dark part of that orange, like what, what color is that actually, where the, where the shade is over here? Mm -hmm. And you start trying to paint that and go, no, 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 that's wrong. It's a little more blue because of the shadow and I, for me, you look at the clock again and three hours has gone by. Wow. Just get lost. You just get lost in it. And, you know, and it's, it's, it's so to me, that's what I do. Yeah. yeah. Tom, you know what I see? I mean, I work with not just athletes today, but I work with a lot of executives and they get in big trouble because they get so singular and yeah. they just work and they work and they work on, on that one thing and they don't have that shift moment. So I, I appreciate you saying that. Right. It's a shift. Some people, there's a great, there's a great book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Mm. And it's about the concept of drawing and how it shifts your brain into another, another manner of thinking the same way. I mean, if you want, you want to change your thought pattern right now, you're, you're spinning your wheels and you have a drinking cup in front of you, take out your notebook and just draw the cup, you know, mm. Not actually what you think, not a kindergartner, but draw what the, what the lines of that cup look like, you know? Look at the shapes of it and see what it actually looks like and try to draw it. And within, within 30 minutes, you know, your brain has kind of scrambled back to actually thinking clearly. Wow. That's cool. A little bit of a reset. Yeah. Yeah. No, we all need it. I, I found actually a lot of ball players that I've worked with, painting is actually one of their... Um, great hobbies. There's a, a, a pitcher, his name is Brett Tomko, and uh -huh. he lives in San Diego. And that was his passion. He would pitch once every five days. But in between, he'd be, you know, beautiful portraits, and he'd get contracted by all the guys on the different teams. So right. I, you know, and it helped kept him, keep him even. Exactly. So. Exactly. There's a great deal. It's uh, the brain work of it, of taking you to a different place, uh, thinking wise and then look it's a great satisfaction to do something that produces a product that you like yeah you know once you make a painting 
it never goes anywhere like it lives. Yeah. yeah. Years later, you think, boy, you remember, and as the painter, you remember the time that you painted it, you remember the experience of painting it, you remember, that's why paintings are so expensive. Painters want to keep everything because they love it so much. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. Yeah, it's, it's a definitely an interesting, um, I, I guess it starts as a hobby for most. I mean, did you, when did you actually start painting? Was it the same time you, you were cutting your teeth in Hollywood or? Yeah, I start. I started like everybody. I bought a bunch of paints. Well, I, I was, I was painting like as a teenager and stuff, and in school, and and horribly, horribly. <laughs> I am not talented at it. One of my daughters is a professional graphic designer. She's fantastic, but I kept. I would buy equipment at the art store, hmm. and I would just paint. I didn't know how you paint. I didn't know how you clean the brushes. I didn't know anything about it, but I would paint. And like everybody, I would paint a duck that looked like some second grader did it. And I would go, oh man, that's hot, you know, that's horrible. And I would throw it out or something. And then when I was adult, maybe my later, later 20s, I just, I thought, I'm, I want to, I want to learn how to do this. I want to learn how to do this. So I started going to classes and I was horrible, mm. but all I did was not quit. You know, that's all I did. Art teachers are funny, you know, because even, even, you know, they have this air about them and everything. And because most people quit, mm -hmm. most people paint the duck like a second grader. And they, I've seen many people, I've seen guys break their, break their uh, brushes, throw it across the room. I've seen so many ladies cry and just in the middle of the class, just put their things, put their things back in their bag and just leave. And I just decided not to be that guy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stink, but I'm just going to keep going. Yeah. You know, just because I want this. I want to learn how to do it. Once you do that, once you keep showing up, it's funny. The teacher changes. Because as soon as the teacher thinks, oh, this guy's not going to quit. Then the teacher comes up to me and says, okay, you see how this model is draped? Here's the beginning of how we think about drawing a person, mm -hmm. you know? So you think about the, you think about the measurement is a head. That's why they do this stuff, measuring your head. And then they say, okay, in the middle of your chest is about the distance of a head. And then your belly button is about another head. And so we get the first, first four. And, and, and the techniques of it start to dawn on you. And you're going, oh. That makes sense. Well, you can have a talent at it, but also you can learn sort of the architecture, the ways that artists look at things mm. to make it look real on a painting. Does that make sense? Yeah, 100%. It sounds like you buy in. And then the, the, the teacher buys in even more, right? right. And, and together, you, you're working together to create. Right, right, right. right. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm a guitar player. I've been, you know, I've been professionally playing for 40 years. Years and years and years ago, one of the greatest things, one, one of my guitar teachers said to me at the beginning of the first lesson, said, I want to teach you the guitar. But before we begin, I want you to commit to learning this. Mm. And it's like, what are you talking about? I mean, I'm, I'm taking guitar lessons. I mean, I'm no, no, no. I want to, in your mind, I want you to prepare your mind to learn these things because they are learnable. And I want you to commit to learning this. So you go, okay, yeah, I, I commit to learning this. To me, it, it was an amazing revelation of telling your brain, Hey brain, you know, don't, don't, don't block any of this information. We're learning this mm -hmm. and the brain does it. I've had long, long, long speeches in television shows that make you want to go to bed and cry because you think, how can a human being learn this? I'm in some lawyer show and in one day, like they send me the new script tonight and I have to perform this tomorrow and the speech is a page long that I have to do and I'm a professional and somehow I got to do this. It's amazing. It's amazing. 
you, you tell your brain in a sense, I'm going to learn this right now. Mm. And you just start and you say, I'm learning it. I'm going to learn this. This sentence leads to that sentence. That sentence leads to that sentence. Boom. You do it. You show up. You act it. And everyone goes, oh, my God, how did you learn that? And you can honestly tell them, you know, I have no idea. Mm. I just did. Yeah. I like how you said, I tell my brain, this is what we're doing. Right. Too many people, they, they let their brain tell them what they're going to do. Yeah. Right. Right. Dangerous. So it's a matter of, yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're smart people. We can learn things. We have the ability. There, there are, of course, like I said, there are talents that people have and you have to, you know, within your, within your talent stack, you have to stay within there generally. But you can learn stuff, man. You can learn stuff. If you just determine to do it, you can learn it. I, I, I'm fully convinced that people make a decision to just stop learning. I think people, they either say, hey, I'm this age, so therefore I'm good, or I've achieved this, so therefore I'm, I'm good. Exactly. So I think it's like a conscious decision that they make to just stop learning. I think, I think you're absolutely right. I think you're absolutely in, in the acting field, I think, almost, I think almost everybody can act. The only thing is embarrassment. Yeah, how much you're in a scene you're in a scene where you have to be emotional or stuff like in high school and there's most people are going i'm not doing that because people are going to laugh at me or i'll be bad at it mm -hmm. and one guy like me would go well i'll go for it i'll make it totally real and i'll just do it and they laughed at me so what you get up here and do it yeah. you know so so most problems in acting are fear of humiliation mm. Were you always the kind of guy that, that could just put himself out there? I mean, I know you grew up, you said you were a little bit inhibited, but were there situations um, maybe outside of, you know, sports and things like that where you felt very comfortable putting yourself out there, like where you were able to overcome things? Um, like I said, I just had a lot of guts. I had the guts, like I had very simple. I'm from Philadelphia, you know, just yeah. like New Yorkers, just exactly. like New Jersey. I'm just like, well, somebody's going to do it, so I might as well get on stage. Why not? You know, what, what, Danny, you're going to get up here and be funnier than me. I doubt it. Go, go for it. Whatever. Like, look, sports and show business are the same thing. They're king of the hill. It's incredibly competitive. If you think you can beat me and take my jobs and take my money, then come on up here and knock me off the hill. And it works that way. Look, you can do it. You can do it. If you want to get funnier than me, get on stage, make more money and say, I want you to hire me and not Tom and they will do it. And that's, that's the way it is. If you want to work in that, then, Hey man, work and, and, you know, and get in. There's an aspect of it in sports or in show business that is Thunderdome, man. Yeah. You know, yep. the guys sitting at the audition, I've known them for years now. I'm friends of theirs. I hope that their audition stinks and mine is good and I get the job and they get another job somewhere, but I want this job. Yeah. I love that. I love that. That that's, that's the, the difference. I think that's just that mentality. I'm going for it. I'm, I'm I am going, going for the simplicity of that. Yeah. You know, it's just simple. Just do right. it. It's just right. It's better than me. Be, be better than me. Look, it's, you know, it's a competition. It's a competition. When I, fir I first came out here, and yes, I was very confident in my acting. I thought, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm good at this. I know what I'm doing on stage. And comedy, all that stuff. And you come to LA, and my first audition, my first audition, I think, was something like, it was like a guest star thing on Happy Days. And you go in the room, and there are 30 of me. Oh, geez. You know? There are 30 guys that look almost exactly like me, that they were in plays in school, they were in plays in college, they took acting classes, they're trying their best to do it, you know? My job was, I want the job, and I want all of them to go home. Mm. It's tryouts, baby. You gotta go That's get right. that spot, right? Spot on the That's table. right. That's right. How many, how many duffel bags full of gear are out on the baseball field you know, at, at, you know, the, the first day of the season in high school or whatever, you know, a lot of duffel bags. Yep. And some are going to stay and some are going to go back in the closet and never come out again. Mm -hmm. That's just, that's the truth. That's the way it is. Yeah.
hey, there's some of those guys that bring the duffel bag, they get caught, they never put the cleats on again. It's over. And I'm sure it's, it's the that's same. What I, yeah, that's you know, what I'm saying. Yeah. That's so what I'm know, saying. It's amazing. And, and, and that's sad. And you have to find a different way with your life. And that happens to everybody. Yeah. That happens to everybody, you know? It's, hap it's happening to me now in comedy because, you know, because there are, because there are mostly young people are going to clubs and they have all the Kardashian references or whatever references that I don't even, you know, I don't even know about. I don't pay attention to it, you know? So, yeah. So, so it's going down like this, down like this. It's okay with me because I went for it. I'm like, you know, I'm cool with how, <laughs> I'm cool with how many comedy shows I've done, which is like 10 trillion. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, but it is. It is a competition. Tom, what do, you, what do you like most? Is it acting? Is it comedy? Is it the music? Is it the art? I mean, I know you love them all, but is there one in particular that, that you're most passionate about? There's nothing like creating the thing out of yourself, you know, and, and making it and making what it is. So to me, two things. There's nothing like stand-up comedy or live performing where you've written the stuff, you've worked on it, you present it, you get the applause, you come off stage, that was your thing. Yep. And a painting. It's your idea, it's your work, it's your equipment, you put it together, you make it, you make it what you want, you hang it on the wall and you say, yeah, that's what I want it to be. So to me, there's nothing like that sort of a thing. Mm. You know, everything else, writing is very satisfying to me. But in, but you know, in writing, you show it to somebody and in order to sell it or make money, they change it a lot. They say, why don't we make the guy a plumber? You know, and, and just as an artist, of course, you're going, the guy's not a plumber. I made like, what are you talking about? But you have to be very, very flexible in your stuff. It's a collaborative business. And in a movie set, it's a collaborative business. If you are Tom Cruise, you can walk out of the building to the car as fast or slow as you want. Mm. If you're me, they say like, Tom, you got to move out of the building and get to the car. Cause we're going to the, you know, cause we're cutting to him coming around. So you're just doing you're hot. You're a work for hire, man. I'm just, I'm just working for you. I got to walk fast just because they're, they're cutting to a chase scene and you know, and they just want me to walk fast instead of slow. Or, or whatever it is. Yeah, no, I get it. Then I guess with the art and the comedy, it's sort of a, just this direct to consumer model. Comes out of me, I make it, you love it, you buy it, or you come watch me. Exactly. All my material. Exactly. Yeah. That's super. Yeah, I can see that. That's cool. I never thought about it like that. Yeah, it's, it's, some, it's just a self contained commodity that you make and you make money for and you buy your food and your, and your house with it. And you know, at the end, you think, hey, man, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I also love your vlogs over the past couple of years. Oh, thanks. Behind the scenes and you explain what everybody does. And mm. Oh, yeah, on the set. And because people don't understand how many workers are on a set and what kinds of skill sets they're bringing to the set. Mm -hmm. I mean, carpenters, electricians, camera people, camera technicians, camera operators, directors of photography, looking at the ship, the comp. You know, there's so many people involved in it. It's amazing to me. Yeah, yeah it's amazing what makes it go. I'm a sports guy, so it, it gives me good insight into this other world of, of entertainment. I mean, I've been in a, a makeup trailer once or twice, but other than that, I, I don't have much. Really? Time. How did that happen, Dana? <laughs> I, I had an inside hook. Ah. Thank you. You know, Dad, Dad worked on my makeup in Back to the Future, in the Back to the Future sequels. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. Dad's brush glued on the glue that put on all that stuff that made me old guy. Yep. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. That had to be. Do you still get a lot of fulfillment and joy in in seeing uh, yourself, your work in the tr in that trilogy? Look, I'm glad about it for all the stuff for all the. You know, it's, it's, for me, it's like a, my Facebook relationship with Back to the Future would be, it's complicated. Yeah. But, but the movies were fantastic. Yeah. And people love them. Mm -hmm. And I love them. Within my life, within my psyche, I try to keep it on an even keel, mm -hmm. you know. I try to keep it so that it doesn't, because it can easily just be a tidal a tsunami that just washes over you, and that's it. 
So I try to, uh, I try to keep that at a reasonable level. But I understand why everybody loves it. I love it. Yeah. I think the movies are great. You know, the movies are great. I love it. And the, the millions of people, I mean, so, you know, I get letters now. I got, I got a letter from Scotland of a young man who was in a coma after an automobile accident who says, you know, your voice, Tom, brought me out of the coma. Wow. Because I love the movie so much that my father just said, just play the Back to the Future movies over and over and over. And you know what brought him out of the coma? Hello, anybody home? Wow. Hey. So, you know, I mean, all of, I mean, and that's just, that's a microcosm of so many people, of so many things, because it warmed people's hearts. It was about a family. It was about your relationship with your mom and dad, you know, and all those things. It's amazing. I love what you I'm, said. I'm amazed that a movie hadn't been done like that. It's a time machine, and you meet your mom and dad when they were your age. Wild. It's wild. Yeah. It still looks you know, us. So it still hooks everybody and everybody, want, and I understand that, that everybody wants to tell me, you know, like I was at, you know, we were having a hard time and my dad was out of work and my family went to this drive-in and we saw Back to the Future. And I, I just want to tell you like what it meant to all of us that we laughed together and everything. And it, you know, it just, it's amazing. And the stories like that are in the many, 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 many thousands over years. So it meant something it meant something really strong and it meant something really good. And that's a good thing. Yeah. And I love what you said earlier about that Mother Teresa quote. I think the love for your craft, you know, it just speaks through your work and the fact that you touched that man's life. You know, he came at like through your, through your work. It's you, yeah. Through that work. It seems yeah. like your, your six inch circle has right. remained pretty full through the years, your ability it's to the, using people. your talents that God gave you. Right. It's the best part of being an artist, right? It's the best part. You actually do what you set out to do, mm. touching people's hearts, yeah. you know, with a, with a little glimpse of life within that piece of art, which reminded them of their dad and mom, of their life, of their challenges. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, just like just being a, a great baseball player, it's wonderful. The excitement of hitting a home run, the excitement of doing well at your job, mm -hmm. but the incredible, incredible blessing of coming up to a little boy who's sick or some child in a wheelchair who will never have the opportunity to run the bases and to mean something real to them and to bless their lives and be kind to them. I mean, that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's everything, yeah. It is. It is. So I, I call this the Becoming a Champion show because I believe we're all on a journey to become our best self and to become a champion in all that we do, which today was definitely, uh, you know, came full circle. But I love to ask at the end of every show, what does the word champion mean to you, Tom? Uh, a champion in the classic sense, you know, look, a champion is a person who fights for something, mm. you know? And, and historically, a champion is a person who fights for good. So, so you can fight for your dreams. You can fight for your wishes. You know, you can fight for your ideas of success. But the biggest thing to fight for is goodness in the world, is love and, and uh, being kind to people. That's, that's the big champion. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? I oh, totally. I agree with you 100%. I think when you keep that front of mind, um, it just keeps you in a really good good place and state mentally. Um, and, and, and you're doing your work for, for good reason. Exactly. I think exactly. it makes your work better, too. Yeah. You know? No, absolutely. There, uh, look, you know, there are a lot of big winners who, you know, who are very unhappy people who can't get along with anyone, who can't get along with their own wife or wives or their children. They can't get along with anyone because they bought into this internet thing, be a big winner, make a lot of money, buy a Maserati. And, you know, congratulations. You're really rich and everybody hates you. Yep. Uh, you know, I don't, I, I've never seen, I mean, look, hey, I live in Hollywood. So, you know, there, yeah. There, yeah. There's, 
there's just plenty of it. You know, I don't understand it, um, but you know, there's plenty of it. Uh, I've lived my life a different way, and I I stand on that, and uh, you know, and that's what I'm a champion for for living my life my way, and um, and just keep on going, and, and and thanking God for every moment along the way, and where He's leading me on. I do not know, but I'm going there. Yeah. No, that's that's super that. cool. Just doing everything for the right reason. It's uh, right. I agree. Well, I, I love this. I think it's been awesome. I, I'm very happy that you came on and took the time. And I don't normally jump on these, but I love you, Tom. My family loves Says you. I got to get on today. I have the best memories of you growing up. And thank you, Lauren, for taking the time to do this. Thank you. You're a sweetheart. You've always been a sweetheart. And if this guy Dana, you know, <laughs> if he gets out of line, you call me. Okay, I will. <laughs> And I'll be there. Yes, I will. You've got a friend. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Tom.